This is what I'm doing now. Before I'm about to do something rote, redundant, research oriented, I ask, I ask GPT first. And sometimes I get what I need. And guess what? That was a fucking free hour of labor for me. Right. You know, um, I was writing, uh, I, you probably, I don't know if you signed it. Hopefully you signed it. Everyone's supposed to sign it. Will, did he sign it? I have a, I have an agreement before you come on the podcast. You know, I could have either have my baller lawyer write it for me for a thousand bucks or I can, because I'm familiar with these types of documents or I can have GPT for write me the most beautiful legal document in 30 seconds. Yeah, right. It's Which happened. Stuff. Yeah. I didn't yeah. sign anything, by the way. God <laughs> damn. But son of a... <sighs> We're going to resend it to you. <laughs> it's too late. You're already on and you haven't tripped and fallen. <laughs> so you're okay. There's time. There's time for me to fall. There's, there, there's time for you to twist your ankle. Yeah. I might <laughs> And just. sue me. Yeah, right. <sighs> Try to pierce the LLC, pal. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. As long as you have it somewhere in the Caribbean, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, uh, you know, I share a, <laughs> I share a room with uh, SB, Sam Bankman Free down in, <laughs> down in the islands. Yeah. So, so if we're like, if we're we have a cleanliness of a data set, companies throw off shit tons of data. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, I can impact. The accounting guys love me. Are you focusing on just drilling down and solving that solution? You say, okay, well now we can, now we got these guys. Now we could start to offer some other solutions and yeah. build this basket. What, what is, what is blue onion? Where are you guys headed? Yeah, it's a great question. So we do think there's a ton of value, like I said, in, in the data set itself. Mm-hmm. And so um, our goal, I think really long-term is to make that data layer kind of the operating system for a business. So right now we, like you said, we, we service kind of the finance and accounting folks on their team where we yeah. help them do reconciliation. We help streamline that process. And we kind of consider that potentially one application that sits on top of this data layer. Mm. So, you know, we want the data layer to be kind of the Microsoft Windows piece of it. I see. Our reconciliation thing is the solitaire or the minesweeper or whatever you want right. to call it. And then either us or other folks can build other applications that sit on top of that data. We can go back to the ah. forecasting piece, right? It takes the same data set to feed these forecasting algorithms. Sure inventory optimization and management. That's another application that kind of sit on top of that data layer. And so, if, you know, we can kind of keep adding in these new sources of data to right. be able to get a more and more complete picture of how this, how a business operates. All these applications can just be sit on top of them. You can plug and play these things to say, you know, here is um, what, how I want my business to look. And it's all fed off of the same source of truth data, which to us, we've kind of reconciled this data to your bank account. We okay. know this is true because you say this is an order and you got paid for it on this day, yeah. and that is the truth. And companies argue so much over what is what actually happened because yeah. they don't know, is it, should I believe this database or this database? Mm. And once you reconcile something in your cash, you know that it's true. So you're triangulating the truth or? Exactly, through these different data sources, we can kind of piece together, we create like the audit trail to say, here's actually what happened. And all the discrep- you wanna go look at the discrepancies, you think you sold this, you think this happened, right. and you can't find anything over here to, to kind of confirm that that's the right. case. And we're cleaning data. Mm-hmm. We're, we're building these massive databases. Where does the machine? Where does the AI and machine learning component fit into this? Yeah, like, in a few different places. And so, you know, one, I ne- I'm never trying to shoehorn kind of algorithms we don't need in there. Like we're, we're not doing generative AI or right. anything like that on there. That's not kind of what's needed. What we do a lot of are things like uh, anomaly detection for when do things happen. So that is a okay. subfield of like type of you know machine learning algorithm. What is bizarre about this data? What should you be paying attention to? Um, either your chargeback rate or something like that went up okay. super high really quickly, or um, even how we match things across systems. Now that should be mostly deterministic in that like, here's a key, we can find this key over here and we can stitch it together. Uh-huh. When you can't, or when there's not keys, we do use kind of some fuzzy logic in algorithmic matching to say, this is likely this thing. And because we don't have any collisions uh-huh. over here, we're going to stitch these records together uh-huh. and, and call this kind of true and reconcile to the bank. There I see. Well. So, so if it doesn't match perfectly, we approximate what a human would do and go, eh, it's not the same code because it came from Chase and this is over here. And But I know it's the same we're transaction. We're sure it's the same thing. Yeah. And uh-huh. so like, you know, and then there's levels for us to say, like, you should review this, or we're pretty confident that this is mm. actually correct. And so rather than them having to- A human through, review layer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So rather than, because, you know, we this is where generative AI is good, right? Is where uh, the cost of being wrong is not that high, like sending out an email or, or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. And in accounting, it's a little bit harder to be, you don't want to have incorrect numbers. And that's something that you, you know, we uh, try to find the right balance of, of moving quickly, but still not showing them incorrect numbers right. thing at the same time, where we want to make sure we have the right checks in place. And so 
we do this kind of through layers of here's what we're damn sure is correct because right. we can trace everything exactly. Here's what we're pretty sure is correct. And then here are the things that you should review because, right. um, you know, it may not be the case that we are, our confidence is not super high. I right? see. So that's, that's really beautiful that you, you can kind of approach the entire field in terms of what's the cost of being wrong? You, because the first tools, including myself, the tool that I've built, the cost of being wrong is really low. Mm -hmm right? We are, Hey, I didn't really describe your, like for my tool, it's just generative. I didn't really describe the award that you won in for doing this thing quite the right way semantically. And it's yeah. like, all right. In you know, case someone opens up an email and they're like, yeah, you know, right. And well, the comedy here is the V, you know, your VA or your outsourced copywriting team would have probably made the same fucking mistake right, right. And, yeah. and didn't semantically understand what that thing means. Um, so you have this low, you have this low risk, high reward opportunity exactly. to send an email and to get a likely uh, in most of our studies, get a higher response rate. Right. And your downside is, well, oh, I just deleted the exactly. email. And that's where it's great right now. 